Hi, I'm Josh Webb. I'm a product manager at Latrum Machinery, and today I'd like to briefly review uh, some data that a customer shared with us. Um, as a quick recap, uh, one of the key frameworks that we use to describe the difference between roller grading and smart sorting is in the diagram you see here. Uh, where the uh, gray curve that goes across the top represents the distribution of a given uh, lot of raw material. Uh, and the curves below it, uh, again here on the left, uh, represent the distributions uh, of the contents of each takeout uh, from that roller grader. Um, obviously, if you've used a roller grader, you're pretty familiar with this pattern. Um, I'd like to call special attention to these overlapping areas. Um, each of these represents scenarios where uh, the particular uh, distribution of a product is, is, is effectively wider than it needs to be, and it creates uh, poor uniformity and, and makes uh, targeting certain counts very challenging. Um, by contrast, the diagram you see on the right is, is how smart sorting works. Effectively, you create these bin limits, these, these vertical lines uh, that separate each shrimp uh, one by one uh, by their piece weight. And so, um, you know, remember this uniformity farm gate price and so forth. And we also have a description of the material in its as graded state. So in this particular uh, scenario, we had uh, eight takeouts. Um, it's important to note that their configuration, their grading configuration was uh, two, uh, four takeout roller graders placed in tandem. And so this represents um, from a precision standpoint, a, a about as good as a roller grader can be. Um, here you see the, the typical information, the counts for each of those grades, URs, the uh, uh, proportion of the whole farm gate pricing um, that all gets rolled up. And then, of course, you have a pretty standard average of averages metric <clears throat> that uses the prices and proportions of each of these sizes to, uh, to do a, a, a sum total of that value. In this case, their particular grading operation added 2.3 cents per kg. Um, so that's a, a, a net positive uh, through the grading operation. Um, what's most interesting about this data is actually what we see down here below. So the customer wanted to deeply understand the exact distribution uh, on a shrimp by shrimp basis um, across this grading operation, right? So to understand exactly how much shrimp of each size was present in each of these grades. Um, so here we did exactly that. So the, the customer took 100 data points from each of these categories, the raw material, the incoming raw material, and then each of these eight sizes here going across the top. So in all, we're talking about 900 data points, 900 individual shrimp weighments that, that constitute this analysis. Um, typically, we don't take that many, but of course, I saw this as an opportunity to understand more about the, the state of, of shrimp grading and understand, you know, obviously what, what smart sorting can do. So I, I saw this data and the first thing I did was to, was to graph it, as you see here. This top graph is raw material. You can see there are very few shrimp that are smaller than, than nine grams and very few shrimp that are larger than 19 grams. If we take each of these, uh, each of these uh, takeout grades and add them together into the same graph, um, you get what you see here below. Um, Effectively, the overlap that we would expect to see uh, before, say, say like this with, with five gentle, uh, slightly overlapping curves, um, is not what we see. Uh, here in this case, we see an enormous amount of overlap. Um, for example, let's look at 13 grams, uh, 13 gram shrimp. Um, there's a, a reasonable probability that you see 13 gram shrimp in size two, in size six, in size three and in size four. So if all of those shrimp are going into each of those sizes, you can see where uniformity, uh, count targeting, uh, post-processing and inspection, you know, are all far more challenging than they need to be. Um, of course, that's just one example for 13 gram shrimp. The same is true for let's say 15 or 14.5. Um, in reality, there's an enormous amount of mixing that happens here that, that hurts both from an economic standpoint, from a labor standpoint, and from a quality standpoint. So when I see this data, I try to understand, well, what would smart sorting do for us? And of course, that's the question that we always ask. And so I digitally combined all of these distributions back together and redivided them using smart sorting. The result is what you see here. Uh, I combined them into uh, three target grades that are, are, are relative to the grades that the, the, the customer had originally targeted. 
and into proportions. Uh, and with URs, they would be uh, market saleable. So again, three sizes, as you see here, with the counts and the URs that, that again, are, are, are listed in, in terms of you know, how this material is separated. Um, so of course, from a uniformity standpoint, you can see that, that these uh, three productizations are gonna have you know, much better uniformity than, than these above and, and much better quality as well. But of course, it's the economics that matter. So we took the same metric, this average of averages, um, and where the original sorting approach uh, added 2.3 cents per kg, uh, smart sorting was able to add 17.5 cents per kg. That's a 15 cent bump uh, through the grading operation, representing a, a 7x improvement in value through the grading operation. You can imagine at scale uh, what that means for the, the profitability of a, of a shrimp processor.